Hi guys, so now we are going to talk about the eye. Uh, so this goes along with chapter 9 in your textbook and of course uh, last time we talked about uh, the chemical senses which were in chapter 8, the way your book does it, they split the visual system up into two chapters. So this deals with the eye and then in the next chapter we'll talk about the visual system in the brain. So. Um, before we talk about the eye, we have to talk about light, because of course light is the sensory stimulus that the eye and the visual system is used to detect. So you might know from physics that light is just a traveling electromagnetic wave, and like any wave it travels at different frequencies. Um, the part of visible light, or part of the electromagnetic spectrum we can see is called the uh, it's called visible light, and you can see here it goes from about 700 nanometers of wavelength to about 400 nanometers of wavelength. So um, that's the only part of the spectrum that we can actually see. Um, outside of that, of course, uh, at shorter wavelengths you have things like X-rays and gamma rays. Um, right above 400 nanometers, we call that ultraviolet radiation because that is uh, the wavelength just above violet, what we call violet. Uh, we can't see those wavelengths, and then below uh, red, below 700 nanometers, you have infrared. In fact, that's what the word infrared means, just below red. And then it goes into microwaves and radio waves, which can be you know, all the way up to tens or hundreds of kilometers long in wavelength. Um, and at the other end, you have very high energy things like gamma rays, which have uh, you know, uh, fractions of, of nanometers in wavelength. So. Um, big range that we can only see a teeny tiny slice of. Uh, so there is, of course, radiation outside of that spectrum around us all the time, but uh, the this, again, band is all we can see because this is the bulk of the light that comes from the sun, and that's one reason why we have evolved the ability to see in that spectrum. And uh, these wavelengths are the kind of light that sort of interact with the normal everyday matter uh, that we see around us. Things like uh, higher energy, things like x-rays and gamma rays are uh, very high energy. They pass right through most of the objects we would look at. That's why x-rays, for example, are used to see through uh, your body because x-rays pass through most of the tissues in your body. And also above those wavelengths into the ultraviolet and x-ray and gamma ray ranges, the wavelengths of that energy are what we call ionizing radiation. So they're so high energy that even if we could see them, you wouldn't want to because they knock electrons out of the orbitals in your body, in the, the molecules of your body, which cause all kinds of bad things to happen, like cancer, for example. And then down at the other end, you have long wavelengths that uh, can bounce off uh, objects that we see, but they can also pass through. Radio waves, of course, you know uh, you can uh, pass through most objects because radio waves are what your cell phone and other wireless devices pick up. So uh, it would not be good as a medium for uh, the visual system because uh, it does not bounce off most objects. So in this range, uh, between 400 and 700 nanometers, those wavelengths um, are just the ones that we evolved to be able to see because, again, they're the most abundant and they uh, interact with normal matter in useful ways. Now that doesn't mean that it's impossible to see outside of those ranges. In fact, there are animals that, for example, can see wavelengths on into the ultraviolet spectrum, and there are animals that can see down to the infrared. Um, and of course there are animals that can't see the same spectrum that we can see, but this is the range that human vision is adapted to. Um, now what's really important about light is that it uh, more or less travels in a straight line uh, until it hits something and then it does one of three things. Um, it is either reflected, which means it bounces off of the surface at the same angle that it hit it. Um, it is absorbed, meaning that some of the energy from the light is transferred to the object that it hit, um, or it's refracted, uh, which means that when it hits uh, a surface that it's transparent to, meaning that it can pass through. Um, but that slows it down a little bit, it turns. So this happens most often when 
light hits, for example, the interface between air and water, um, or air and glass, or water and glass, or uh, whatever. So um, this uh, this is because light travels uh, a little bit faster through air than through water. Uh, of course, you probably know that the speed of light is a constant, but that is the speed of light in a vacuum. Um, and uh, at uh, when light travels through something else like air or water or glass or whatever, it actually travels a tiny bit slower. And so when it hits uh, a meet an interface, when it goes from air to water or, uh, or air to glass, it uh, bends because it slows down a tiny bit. Um, Absorption is really important uh, because, and actually this is true for all of these uh, properties, the the ability for light to do this depends a lot on its wavelength. So, um, for example, if you are looking at a surface that has a color in it, um, it's because it absorbs light at one color and reflects the light at a, of a different color. So, if you're looking at uh, a green object, for example, that means it has some sort of pigment or substance in it that uh, absorbs wavelengths of light outside of the green part of the spectrum, so right here at this wavelength, and then uh, uh, other wavelengths get absorbed. And so that's why it appears green, because the light that bounces off it is in the green part of the spectrum, and the light that is absorbed is in every other part of the spectrum. Um, White light, or white uh, things that are, have a white color to them, uh, reflect visible light in all the different wavelengths. So um, when you see, for example, the, the background of this screen, it is white because it uh, is actually showing you all the different wavelengths of light at once. Um, and black light is generally the, or black uh, pigments absorb all the wavelengths, meaning that they don't reflect any light uh, within the visible spectrum. and so it appears black. Here's an example of uh, refraction. Uh, this is the old broken pencil illusion. The pencil in the water looks the way it does because light that passes through the water uh, travels slightly slower than the light passing through the air. So that makes it bend. Um, and so when it hits your eye, uh, it's coming from a slightly different angle. Um, and that is, again, just a property of light.